So in today's video, I'm actually going to be breaking down the M4 assault rifle and explaining how some of the different attachments work within the game. And I'm actually going to be providing three best class setups because when it comes to the M4, there's actually three different caliber. They have the 5.56, 9mm, and then the 485 SOCOM. So within the video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at how the damage ranges change depending on which magazine you go with, as well as the rate of fire, the shots to kill, the time to kill, and how the recoil pattern changes as well. Doing all the hand testing takes a considerable amount of time so if you could do me a favor if you're new here or part of the 72 percent of viewers not currently subscribed feel free to click that subscribe button and turn on those notifications that way you can stay up to date on the latest call of duty news best class setups and tips to help you improve and if you enjoyed the video or find it helpful please remember to hit that like rating let's go ahead and get into it so we're going to go ahead and take a look at the different damage ranges for the base weapon as well as the nine millimeter and the socom magazine and if you go ahead and take a look at the top left hand corner you can see that the shots to kill are are color coded on the specific lines so for the base weapon you're going to see it's a four shot two five shot kill weapon if you go ahead and extend the range out a little bit with some attachments you're going to go ahead and see that on the second bar when it comes to the nine millimeter you can see it has various ranges from four shots to kill all the way up to seven shots yes there is a weapon with seven shots to kill if you equip this specific attachment but obviously you're going to have less recoil faster rate of fire when it comes to the socom Regardless of what you do to it, as long as you equip that magazine with 10 bullets, it will always be three shots to kill. And that's just the body shots. That's not even factoring in the headshots that do additional damage. But we're going to go ahead and focus on those individually because the number of headshots needed to reduce the shots to kill will vary depending on which magazine you go with. And obviously when we're looking at a specific weapon, all those other variables matter besides the range. So when we look at the rate of fire for the base weapon, it ends up firing at approximately 836 rounds per minute. We're going to take a look at the 9mm magazine. We end up with a rate of fire of 1,009 rounds per minute. And then we go ahead and look at that SOCOM magazine. It ends up being a lot slower at 600. 54 rounds per minute so when trying to figure out which option is the best we got to go ahead and compare the shots to kill with the rate of fire and that'll end up giving us the time to kill and then once we've gone ahead and done that we can go ahead and take it a step further to figure out how many headshots we need to reduce the shots to kill which will end up lowering the time to kill so just looking at the base time to kill you can see the various times to kill in milliseconds you can see for the base one it's 215 milliseconds all the way up to about 30 meters we look at the 9mm, it has a fast time to kill at point blank ranges, but as soon as you get a little bit further, it ends up dropping off significantly. And for the bottom one, you can see it's always going to be the exact same 183 milliseconds, regardless of the range. So now that we've gotten that part out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about headshots. When it comes to the base weapon, you're only going to need to land one headshot to reduce the time to kill. So that's from four down to three and five down to four. When it comes to the nine millimeter magazine, you are generally going to have to land two headshots to reduce the time to kill. And if they're at the furthest range, if you land all four shots as a headshot, it will reduce the time to kill all the way down to four shots, which is pretty significant, but that's not very practical. So I'm not really gonna include that in the chart. And then it comes down to the last one, which is the 458 SOCOM, which has the same effect as the base. Regardless of what range you're at, it will always reduce the time to kill and shots to kill to land at least one headshot. And it'll drop the number of shots needed to kill from three down to two. And we're going to take a look at that range chart. It looks significantly different. You could see the time to kills from 144 milliseconds, which is incredibly fast for the base M4. And you can also see how the nine millimeter is affected by this. It has a very fast time to kill point blank, but as you get a little bit further, it drops off and it isn't all that valuable. Then when we take a look at the SOCOM, it is 92 milliseconds at every single range. And just to show you how crazy that is, here's a little clip for you at about 140 meters. Please excuse that first missed shot, but you can see I'm using a sniper scope on the SOCOM M4. And right there, it was only two shots to down the player. So at first glance, you'd probably think that that's pretty broken. We've taken a look at the ranges, the rate of fire, the shots to kill, the overall time to kill for each one of these magazines. So now we're going to go ahead and take a look at each one of those magazines recoil pattern side by side without any other attachments and with what I believe are the best attachments for this weapon. So it's pretty clear to see here that the recoil patterns are very different depending on if you're using the base weapon, the 9mm or the SOCOM. 
And then once you go ahead and stack on those attachments, you can also see how it's gonna go ahead and affect that recoil. So for the base, you can see there's about a 40% reduction there with the nine millimeter, almost all the recoil's gone. Then there's a minor reduction in recoil for the SOCOM. So now that we've gone ahead and covered the ranges, the rate of fire, the shots to kill, the time to kill, and the overall recoil, we can actually start building some best class setups for each one of these magazines. So when it comes to specific attachments, it gets a little bit confusing because there's so many pluses and minuses. If you go too extreme, on the aim down sight speed, you're gonna end up having so much recoil, you're not gonna be able to hit your shots. And if you go the opposite extreme and put everything towards no recoil, your aim down sight speed is gonna be very slow. And if you end up running up against someone, odds are you're gonna lose that gunfight before you're even able to aim down sight. So how I was able to choose my attachments, I went ahead and combined the information that I had gathered about time to kill the various ranges. And I went ahead and combined that with the research Exclusive Ace did in terms of aiming down sight. And I went ahead and combined all that information. I'm gonna go ahead and link his video down in the description because if you haven't watched it i definitely recommend you watch it after this video so let's go ahead and start off with the third best ranked class setup in my opinion and that is going to be for the nine millimeter magazine so obviously we're going to go with the nine millimeter magazine and for the muzzle we're going to go ahead and go with the compensator for the under barrel we're going to go ahead and go with that commando foregrip when it comes to the rear grip we're gonna go ahead and go with the stippled grip. And for that fifth attachment, you can either go with a barrel or an optic. Personally, I prefer an optic. But if you're looking to extend the range and you don't really have a problem with the iron sights, I'd go with the Corvus Custom Marksman. And I'd recommend any of the top three optics or that APX5 holographic sight. So that one I would actually say is a pretty decent class. It's the laser beam like we saw in the recoil pattern. The only real problem with this one is the time to kill feels a little bit slow, especially at some of those medium to longer ranges. So when it comes to the base weapon and the SOCOM magazine, it was actually too hard to choose one over the other because I think it really depends on what mode you're playing and how many enemies you're gonna be going up against. And here's pretty much how it breaks down. If I'm in a 1v1 engagement, I am 100% going to go with the SOCOM just because that time to kill is so consistent and so disgusting, especially if you land a headshot. But if you're playing on a bigger map or you expect to get rushed by multiple people on the map you're playing on, like Ground War, for example, I'd probably go with the base M4 just because of that ammo difference. When you're talking about having 30 or 50 rounds, or even 60 rounds if you decide to go with that magazine to slow down your aim down sight time, you're gonna be more equipped to handle that situation. We're gonna start off with the SOCOM best class setup, obviously gonna be running the SOCOM magazine. For the muzzle, we're gonna go ahead and run the compensator. For the under barrel, we're gonna go ahead and run the commando foregrip. As far as the rear grip goes, we're gonna use that stippled grip tape. And then when it comes to barrels, you don't actually need to equip a barrel because the range is irrelevant. So if you want a little bit faster aim down sight time, you could definitely pick another one. But personally, I'm gonna go with an optic on this one. And it's gonna be one of those optics I've already mentioned. And one little side note when it comes to this particular attachment, it is not currently banned and competitive. I would expect it gets added to the list because I think this is a little bit overpowered, especially when you factor in the accuracy of a professional player combined with that headshot damage. And that's gonna bring us to probably the all around best class setup for most scenarios. Obviously it will get outgunned by this SOCOM attachment, but size out when we're talking about the base weapon, I highly recommend again, going with that compensator for the underbarrel, the commando foregrip, for the rear grip, that stippled grip tape. When it comes to the barrels, the Corvus Custom Marksman. And then for that last attachment, personally, I'd go with an optic, but if you need that extra ammo and you don't have a problem with the iron sights, I'd go with that 60 round mag. And that pretty much covers the best class setup for the M4 and all its variations, whether you want to use it in its base form, nine millimeter form, or the SOCOM form. And it's no surprise that people are calling for a nerf for this specific weapon. We'll see how that goes in the balancing update that we get later this month. And for anyone wondering about the rest of the class setup, pretty much for my secondary, I use a launcher. For my perk one, I use EOD. Perk two, I use Ghost. For perk three, I'm using Tune Up. When it comes to my lethal, I use a Claymore. And for my tactical, I am using a stun grenade because of the recent change to Claymores. So usually for most best class setups, I don't have to go this in depth when it comes to the actual class setup. But obviously, since there is so much going on, I really want to explain myself. And something I typically like to do on the back half of any best class setup video is kind of take you through my thought process as I'm navigating around the map using the specific weapon, kind of talking about some of its strengths and weaknesses. This one is a particularly funny clip. If you stick around till the end, you'll see exactly why. You can see I'm pushing up on this side of the map. This is actually a horrible map, by the way. 
regardless of what mode you play it is just all around bad because what typically happens you have some guys sniping in the back of his spawn camping for a streak and then once they get that streak they end up getting map control because they'll call in a VTOL a gunship they'll die and then just repeat that process never leaving spawn but what I'm doing right here is kind of pushing forward so I can kind of cut off this area if anyone comes by me I could try and figure out what's going on right there I was double checking because I wasn't really seeing any teammates they were all sitting in the back of the spawn and then eventually all of them end up leaving the entire team leaves while I'm on a five streak you can see there's a footsteps coming by I go ahead and back up you can see the entire team left and then I go ahead and double check kill this guy double check the scoreboard and that was pretty much the end of that so hopefully you guys did enjoy the video if you did please remember to hit that like button if you're brand new to the channel feel free to hit that subscribe button so you'll be able to find your way back and if you want to get notified when a video goes live definitely make sure you ring that bell appreciate all the support on the content thank you for watching and as always have a great day